So you just saw another post about The Last of Us, and you can't decide whether you want to remove it from the collective psyche or feed into the hype yourself. Well, you've come to the right place. I'm mad curious, and if I had heard about the 7,914 zombie story to find its way into my social media feed, I would say, please stop. It's probably not even good. I'm not going to watch or play it. Leave me alone. I do that all the time. Ask my community. So I'm not here to convince you to join us. I'll keep all the cookies to myself. I'm here to tell you just enough about this trending story for you to decide whether you want to hop over to the dark side or to block the term The Last of Us from every social media feed that you have. What better way to make this decision than by having your five biggest questions about The Last of Us answered? I'll even throw in a bonus at the end. For those of you who decide to join us in the fandom of how and where to play this game, since there are a bunch of versions, hint, there's a way to play for free, sort of, in a soon to release version, finally, outside of the PlayStation ecosphere. Five questions, here we go. Why should I be interested in yet another zombie franchise? Why is there so much hype over an old game? Would non-gamers enjoy this show or is it just a show for an already established audience? Why do gamers enjoy this game and is it a game for even non-gamers? Should I spend my time and money on The Last of Us? Why should I be interested in yet another zombie franchise? So maybe you've heard that this is a story about a man that helps a kid across a zombie riddled United States for some reason. And there's a father-daughter bond. It still sounds pretty ununique. What makes this story stand out over any other zombie story? Can't I just watch The Walking Dead for this? It has more characters, so there's more potential stories and interpersonal relationships to explore than just the father-daughter bond. First obvious answer is that it's a game. Of course, there are Walking Dead games too, but this is a game that a show was built off of. So obviously that's a different medium structure that was translated. Now, there are other shows that follow that transition from game to TV or game to movie, and that's not in itself unique. So that leaves the story. The story alone is unique in that it's emotionally resonating in the way that it shows the little details and the character development. You see these people at their best and their worst. You see them change. Okay, that still sounds not that unique. So the reason that the zombie apocalypse was the backdrop for this story is to heighten and hasten the extremes in these characters' nature. Instead of two characters going on a trip to say the grocery store, where the worst possible thing that can happen is a long line at the register, you get upset and maybe you're cursing under your breath. Instead, in a game like this with the zombie apocalypse, you have character development under the extremes of having to decide whether to get rid of someone who was bit or leave someone when your life is in danger. If you like emotionally affecting stories like that, then The Last of Us might be for you. If not, all right, why is there so much hype over an old game? Three things, replayability, a specific community finding use for it, and a sequel. The Last of Us came out in 2013. Why do we care about such an old game? Replayability. This is a linear game that knows and sticks to its focus. An emotionally resonating story with enough variety in gameplay that is still somehow harmonious with the story. The gameplay actually adds to the story depending on how you play it. The cutscenes are emotionally resonating over and over again, and you can shift how you approach different combat sections through stealth or even trying to run through. If you don't like games with that type of gameplay, then The Last of Us might not be for you. If you're a hardcore gamer and you're like, eh, doesn't sound challenging enough, hold on. It wasn't just replayability that kept The Last of Us alive, it was how people replayed it. There is a group of challenge run players who speed run, who do permadeath runs. They've latched on to this linear game where things spawn in expected places pretty often, but there's still a lot of intricacies to discover over time. The Last of Us has become a phenomenon in the challenge run community as a study for how games are made, how AI functions, as you answer analyze the fastest or least risky option through a combat sequence. It's a fun analysis of gaming for even the most hardcore gamers. And this is one of the standout games for that type of gameplay. Those challenge run players have helped keep this game alive. Finally, in terms of why people are caring about an older game, the sequel that came out in 2020, which just so happened to be the year that everyone was stuck inside. There's a lot to be said about that game, but all you need to know now is that it reinvigorated the hype for the first game, ahead of its potential as a TV show. Third question, would non-gamers enjoy this show or is it just a show for the already established audience? You see, The Last of Us focuses more on the characters and their relationships than the zombies. However, if you like zombies, the game has a whole lot more of them than the show. There are whole episodes of the show that barely a zombie graces. So while it's a fun new version of the story for those who've already played it, there are different valuable traits in each way that it's told. I'm not gonna break down the differences between the game and the show here, but I will be in another video if you're interested, which will be out a few days after this video. So by the time the majority of you are watching this, it's already available if you'd like to see it. They focus in on different elements of the story that work better in a show. They expanded on things that wouldn't have worked as well in the game, and they present the story in a way that's friendly to even people who might hate gaming. So no, it's not just a show for people who already love the games. It's absolutely a story that can resonate with non-gamers and even those who don't really care for zombies.
Question four, why do gamers enjoy this game? And is it a fun game even for non-gamers? The Last of Us has a variety of gaming elements and caters to multiple different types of gamers. While it's a linear game, which initially sounds limiting, it's focused and it doesn't have some 60 hour grind. You can play this game in a style that fits your preferred type of gaming, whether that's stealth, combat, running, or some combination of the three. It even has in the newest version, immense accessibility options. They also have a very easy mode for those of you who maybe want to experience the game in that way, but you aren't a gamer and you don't want to have to develop any heavy gaming skills. We're rolling through. It's question five. Should you spend your time and money on The Last of Us? The Last of Us stands out as an emotionally resonating story with great character development and makes you question things about your own humanity up until the very last second of the game. It has a beautiful soundtrack and varietal gameplay that generally won't take you more than 20 to 25 hours, even if you're not a gamer at all. And it'll probably take you less time than that. I believe the average is about 15 hours. I rounded up for those of you who may not be gamers at all or who enjoy exploring further than just the main story. However, However, if you don't want to invest even 20 hours into this game to get the story of The Last of Us, you can watch the HBO show or you can even watch somebody else's playthrough on places like YouTube or Twitch and still get a beautiful experience with The Last of Us without spending that time and money. Bonus time. For those of you who've decided not to join The Last of Us fandom, if I helped you make that decision, please leave a like and subscribe. I just started this channel and it would help me tremendously. For those of you who are going to give The Last of Us a chance, here's your bonus as to how to find it in potentially the most economical ways. A little background will help you understand which version you can have sort of for free. They had a PS3 version. That was the OG version that The Last of Us came out on in 2013. Then in 2014, they had a PS4 version come out. That is called the Remastered. And that is what everyone played up until September 2022 when part one came out. That is the remade version of The Last of Us for PS5. So they've had a version for each generation of console. The Last of Us, The Last of Us Remastered, and The Last of Us Part One. The remake is labeled part one because obviously they had a sequel that we discussed before and that one is referred to as part two. And with part one coming out in September 2022, there couldn't have been more perfect timing for the release of the show in January 2023. Hmm. Real quick plug on more Last of Us content before we get to the last information goodie. I have a video on why everyone is obsessed with The Last of Us in my playlist on answering life's biggest questions through video games. And I currently have one in the works for the TV show versus the video game that will release the day after the show finishes, which should be just a few days after this video releases. So for the vast majority of you watching this, it will be available to you already. I'm also soon going to be replaying The Last of Us 2 as multiple commenters have asked for a video on that as well. Actually, I had asked in my very first video about why everyone is obsessed with The Last of Us if anyone would like to see a spoiler-free version. And that has resulted in me actually creating a spoiler-free playlist for all of you to see and decide what games are valuable to you. And then if you love the game that you play or you didn't, you can come back and watch my deep dive after and tell me what you thought of the game. So please, if you have recommendations, feel free to share and I just might incorporate them into this channel. If you wanna catch my Last of Us 2 playthrough live, I will be doing it on my Twitch channel as a non-stop playthrough event. And if you happen to miss that, I'm currently playing through some of the most beloved and meaningful games in gaming history. Okay, finally, where to get the game? You can play the game for free, included in a PlayStation Plus membership. No, this is not an ad. This is just me sharing a tip for those of you who might wanna play it and have an interest in a lot of different games and PlayStation as a whole. So for $50, you get a bunch of games included. And with today's prices of $70 per game, that's pretty good. I know for me, when I got the membership, you got the entire PlayStation Classics collection. They've changed the structure a little bit since then, and they now have membership tiers. I'm not 100% certain that the Classics collection is included on that bottom tier. I had the Classics collection unlocked on the original one tier structure, and then I upgraded to the premium tier. Quick tip on that, I got it during a Black Friday sale. You can also probably get a pretty cheap version of the game online. Since there's now a part one, there's now the classics collection version. Anyone who doesn't want their disc version anymore might be selling it online. It's a pretty old game, so you can probably find a pretty decent deal on the remastered. Finally, if you don't have a PlayStation, I have great news for you. Because for the last decade, this game has only been available for people who have PlayStations. A PC version of The Last of Us is set to release at the end of March 2023, which at the making of this video is only a few weeks away. Also intriguing timing with the show. Huh. They know what they're doing. And I'm a fan that's certainly not complaining. I'll see you in the next one.